Today we're putting my know-how to the test to see how many multimeter functions I can identify and test. We're starting the timer in three, two, three, two, one. Let's go. All right, number one here is we're gonna test batteries to see if they're any good anymore. Uh, for nine volts, we've always got the lick test. Yeah, that one's still good. That doesn't work so well for these one and a half volt batteries. So uh, instead of throwing away batteries because we think they're dead, but it's actually the toy that they go in that's broken. We're gonna test them here. A lot of multimeters like these actually have like a specific, that's like four nine volts. And I put the leads on there and you can see, yeah, 0.64. It's supposed to have nine guys. So it's got a little juice, but not very much juice. So that one I'm gonna call dead. These ones should be one and a half volts. I'll switch this to the 1.5 volt. And look at that, 1.56, 1.58. That's good, which makes sense because it's a brand new battery and Energizer, I would expect you to give me at least one and a half volts. All right, test number one done. Now as a bonus, I'm gonna show you how you can actually test other kinds of batteries too. So we're just gonna switch this here to voltage, direct current. You see the little line with the little dashes under that? That means direct current. Up here we got voltage, alternating current. So I'm gonna switch it to the 20 volt here. This is actually a 20 volt battery. And I'm gonna switch, put this in the negative side and this in the positive side. And it's measuring 20.5 volts. I know this is still a good battery. Now, if I had a battery that I charged up and it was not measuring the full 20 volts, I would know that that battery's life is basically ended. Um, it's not gonna hold, um, it's, it's not gonna really work very well anymore. And I'm gonna have to replace it. All right, next, let's go ahead and switch to alternating current voltage. This is a way to test to see if your outlet is working properly and really if it's got power at all. So I can take the two leads. I'm gonna take the red one. Actually first, let's go ahead and switch this to the right setting. Um, these just give you different kind of ranges. So 200 volts, uh, that's gonna be the one that I'm gonna use for um, kind of a standard voltage outlet. Even it says 200 here. These should measure about 110 to 120 typically. Um, and it's gonna show up right. But if I switch it to a different range, it might not measure it at all because it's outside of the range for the multimeter. All right, so I'm gonna stick the red in the positive side. I'll stick the black in the neutral side. For safety's sake, they actually say to do them both with the same hand so that if it does for some reason zap me, it goes through my hand and doesn't run like all the way through my heart, <laughs> which is what it could do if I use two different hands and I'm just gonna stick those all the way in. And we're measuring 120.3 volts. Let's see what happens if I switch it to the 600 volt. Oh, it's still gonna show it, 120. It's just not gonna give me the decimal points. It's not gonna give me as much detail. All right, so now we've covered voltage, but now we're gonna look at continuity. There's a really, really satisfying test in these multimeters where we're gonna switch it over here to the sideways Wi-Fi looking symbol. And then essentially, if, if electricity is able to flow, then it's gonna just give me a satisfying beep. Great. So I can stick one end on one end of a wire and the other end on the other end of a wire and cool, right? And you can see how this would be super handy. You know, if we're afraid that maybe the wire inside the wall somewhere has gotten broken, maybe because we ran too much current through it, something we talk about in another video. Um, and so what you could do is you could connect this on one end over like where the breaker is and on the other end at like an outlet and see if there's a break in the line in between. But of course that's only gonna work if your breaker and your outlet are within about four feet of each other. All right, let's just move on to the next one. Okay, so next we're gonna look at not just whether or not wires you know, connected and continuous, but we're gonna look a little bit at resistance. You see, um, all things have some resistance. If electricity flows through it, it's got some resistance. So here, we're gonna go, oops, <laughs> they're touching each other. We're gonna switch it over here to the ohms. That's ohm is that symbol right there. It is a Greek letter. And so we're gonna switch it to ohms and that's measuring resistance. Right now it's showing essentially infinite resistance because the air in between these two leads doesn't really conduct electricity. If I touch one end of the lead over to the um, insulation, the rubber, and the other end to the wire, it's still also gonna measure essentially infinite resistance be, which is good because it means that if I touch this while there's current running through it, I'm safe. But look, if I touch the two ends of the wire, 
it's showing a reading of, it's a low number, 0.5 ohms. That's a really low resistance, which is a good thing, right? Because copper wire shouldn't be resisting electricity a whole lot. It should let plenty flow through. A light bulb, on the other hand, you know, an incandescent light bulb, which <laughs> you're hard to find anymore, is gonna have some resistance. That's the whole point. That's what makes it light up. So if I touch one end to that side and the other end to that side, it's measuring 14.3 ohms, 14.2. And where that's really handy is if you wanna measure whether, if you see if like a heating element or something has gone out, a heating element should have a specification for how much resistance it has. Again, it's the resistance in the element that causes it to create heat. And so if your resistance goes way down, it could be that the heating element went out and now the current's flowing through it really well. Or if it goes really high, like to infinity, it means that heating element's like burned up. And so now electricity can't flow through it. If it's too low or too high, in either case, the heating element isn't gonna heat anymore. And that would be a good way to test if that's the part that's gone out in a heating system. All right, next up, we're gonna look at DC current. We're gonna look at amps. So on here, I can switch it over to amps. And there's a few different levels. Again, there's the 10 amp in the hundreds, or this is hundreds of milliamps, which is a thousandth of an amp. So these are getting smaller. And this is like 2000 microamps. And these are all direct current. You can't measure with this, you can't measure alternating current, current numbers. Now, when I do this, I'm gonna have to switch the red lead from there over to the amp side. I also need to make sure that I don't go over the number that's listed here. So if I think something's gonna take more than 10 amps, it's actually gonna blow a fuse inside. Um, and it also tells me not to run it for more than 30 seconds every 15 minutes. You can see where this would be really useful if I wanted to know how much current something like my toaster is drawing. All I would have to do is I could run a wire, like this one maybe, I could shove it in the neutral side of my outlet and then plug it the other end, connect it to the neutral side here, and then all I've gotta do is run this wire from the positive side to the positive side of the plug, and then turn the toaster on, and then I could get a reading. That doesn't seem very safe. I got an idea. I'm gonna use this. It's like 20 bucks on Amazon. I could plug it into the wall right here, and then I could just plug my toaster into it, and I could go to the current setting. Look at all the different things it can measure. It's got the voltage right there. Gosh, current. It's measuring only eight milliamps. Now I turn on the toaster and now it's changed to about 7.4 amps. That's a way easier way to measure that. So for things that plug in like this, don't try to use a multimeter to measure the current. Also, it wouldn't have worked anyway because it's alternating current. And like we said before, uh, this is only made to measure direct current. So why the heck would you ever use this to measure current? Well, it actually makes a lot of sense. I'm gonna turn this off, it's pretty toasty warm. Um, this makes a lot of sense if you're working like on a vehicle or you know, a, a battery-based system. So uh, you know, a home solar system or something, or in your car. So if you wanna try to see if like there's current being drawn um, in your car, like they call it a parasitic power draw. So if you've got things that are sucking power and that's killing your battery, this could help you find that. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense once again for kind of the home DIY thing. It's more of a automotive tool, but useful, I guess, nonetheless. But I gotta point this out, okay? I'm gonna put a link to this in the description. Again, this is really inexpensive on Amazon and it measures like basically everything that this measures. The only thing is it only works for stuff that plugs in. This is gonna be more for, you know, you're making repairs and you're dealing with the actual wiring. You're dealing with small circuits, you're dealing with your car, any number of other things. So useful, but not the best tool for some things. All right, let's move on to the next stuff. Next up is the diode mode. Um, if you're like, what the heck is a diode and why would I ever use this? LEDs, they fall under diode, right? So if you wanna test if an LED is working right, you could use it for that. If you're doing things with small electronics and circuit boards, that's gonna be helpful. On this multimeter, it's actually, I don't have a diode mode setting. That's because I bought the Southwire multimeter a few years back, and now I wish I hadn't because I could have bought the Klein brand from Lowe's or on Amazon for about the same price, and it does have the diode mode. And I think it's just a better multimeter in general. So 
I'll link to that in the description too. If you want a multimeter, I would get the Klein one. Uh, it is better. This doesn't have a diode mode, but the thing with diodes is they only let the electricity flow in one direction. And so you can measure that and make sure it's working properly if you want to test an LED. The other option is you just connect it up and run power through it. But again, we want to test stuff. The multimeter is good for that. That leads me to the next feature that some of them have that this one doesn't. If you want to spend more like $200 on a multimeter, you can get a multimeter that can also measure the temperature. Or you can be a man and have a meat thermometer that works exactly the same way. If you get one that can measure temperature, it will have a separate probe like this that you can use to measure the temperature of stuff. I already have one of those, so I think I'm going to save the $175 extra that it would cost to get that multimeter. But that multimeter also measures one other thing that could actually be really useful. It measures capacitance. Again, this one doesn't measure capacitance, and you might wonder, when am I ever going to need to measure capacitance? Well, quick story. Uh, like two weeks ago, the air conditioner at my house stopped working completely. Like it wouldn't turn on and I wasn't around to take care of it myself. And so we had a repairman go out and take a look at it and they looked at it and they're just like, oh, the capacitor's gone out. It doesn't work anymore. Which is exactly what I assumed it probably was going to be, but I wasn't there to test it myself. They charged $500 for the service call and replaced the capacitor and we had the AC running the same day. I also went and ordered up a backup capacitor because these only last about five years um, and the air conditioning system is going to last a lot longer than that. So I bought an extra one to keep on hand. So we paid $500 for someone to come test a capacitor and swap it out. Maybe a 15 minute job and they swapped it out with a $20 part. With um, a multimeter that measures capacitance, I could very easily and accurately see whether or not this is working. But here's the hack. I can switch it over to resistance, the ohms number again. And if I put the negative over here on, this is an AC capacitor, it's gonna have an air conditioning capacitor. It's got three. One of them says C, that's the common. This is the fan and this is Herm. <laughs> I don't remember what that stands for. That's okay. So I can touch this to the common side and I can touch this to Herm and looks like I'm getting nothing, like infinite um, resistance. And then for the fan, same thing. That's what you would expect on a, uh, on a capacitor that's gone out. If this were a good capacitor, then when I touch it, it will initially give me a reading. It'll jump up real quick and then it'll go back down. It's not like a perfect test. It won't always work properly. But if I get zero, zero, if I pull this out and immediately discharge it and then can test it right away, um, I should get that jump if it's still good. If it's not good, it's gonna give me zero. But if I were actually using the expensive multimeter, I'll link to that one too, because even at $200, that would have been cheaper than paying for the dang service call. But that one would actually give me a reading of capacitance and then I would actually know by checking that versus the numbers that are written here on the side, I would know if it was any good or not. Okay, one more that I want to show you that, shoot, my multimeter doesn't measure that either. But the expensive one will measure the frequency. Frequency is, we talk about in alternating current, the current alternates back and forth, anyway, at a certain frequency. And in the US, it's 60 hertz. In some parts of the world, it's 50. Some multimeters will measure that and I could stick these in and it would tell me what the frequency is. But my multimeter doesn't, but my other cheap tool does. So I can plug this in to the wall and I find the frequency setting and it tells me, oh good, my frequency of my electricity is 60 Hertz, exactly as we expect it to be. I don't actually know why I would care that much about that um, in most DIY situations. I've never needed that feature, but it's a feature of some multimeters if you spend enough money. Okay, so I got through several tests. Um, we'll count them up here on the screen. And I did it in the time that we set. So I think that's pretty great. Now I'm curious, how many of those features and use cases were you already aware of? And what are some other really good use cases you found for a multimeter? Comment below, I'd love to hear how you're using this amazing tool that can do a lot of things. It just doesn't do all of those things as well as some other tools. I don't know, use the right tool for the right job. Anyway, we'll talk more about that in another video. We'll see you all here next time on Fixture.